Lovely, good, because we're going to hop right into it. Today, we're going to be a bit shorter than we normally are, because today we're doing the spiritual gift survey. But uh, we're going to hop straight into the worship and turn to 298 in the songbook. The words will come up on the screen. Come, thou all-inspiring spirit, into every longing heart, one for us by Jesus' merit, now thy blissful self in part. Let's stand and sing together and rejoice. Come down all inspiring Somebody read verse 3 for us. Isn't that such a wonderful line there? Waiting like attentive Mary. Isn't that what we've come to do? We've come to sit at Jesus' feet, to be in his presence, to hear what he says to us in this place and in this time. Let's sing verse 3 and 4 together then. Give us quietly. Oh, 
please be seated. So we come today to continue. We're continuing in our time of Lent, in our time of self-denial, and we're, we're going to have a focus in a little while on our self-denial. And we're continuing as well in our desert life. We're thinking about the desert life, and we thank um, Anne Florence last week in Massimo for leading the service, but also for sticking with that theme of the desert life. And today we're going to be thinking about instructions, uh, instructions from the desert. But also as part of our time here today, um, we're going to fill in some spiritual gift surveys. So uh, I've, I've made the service a little bit shorter than it normally is because I know some of you feel you have to rush off afterwards. But uh, we'll be done a little bit earlier. So please don't rush off. Please stay just for a little while for two reasons. One, because we have cake. <laughs> okay? It's Augustina's birthday today. She's 70 years old. So we say... So we're going to, we're going to have some cake to celebrate that, but also because we're just going to ask you to take some time to fill in the spiritual gift survey. Now, I, I pray and hope that you'll be patient with that. Unfortunately, um, this is the spiritual gift sur- not unfortunately, I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> this is the spiritual gift survey that comes with NCD that we're working with. So it is a little bit longer than um, a spiritual gift survey than you might have done before. But what we're going to be able to do is once we've done it and once we put it all together, we'll be able to look at our whole church and see how our gifts are spread, where we are as a church in terms of what gifts we have, maybe even seeing what gifts we're missing and maybe to help direct our prayer as a church to pray that God will provide people with those gifts um, to to help us in those areas as well. But um, we're going to continue to worship, and as we do, we're going to sing a song which calls us closer to God. It's 920, far and near, Hear the call, worship him, Lord of all. There we go. Families of nations come and celebrate what God has done. If you want to stand, stand, but if you need to stay seated, stay seated. But let's just sing this song together in worship. Far and near, hear the call. Thank you. 
Father God, we pray that as we come, we come with that kind of anticipation of, of meeting with you, of wanting to be filled by your Spirit so that we will proclaim you loud and clear to the world out uh, amongst where we live, Father God, that other people will be drawn to you because of who you are and that the whole creation, that the oceans will roar and that nature will sing of your goodness and love so that all people will come to know you. We pray that as we worship, you will continue to lead by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So hear the call. But what's the call? Well, to worship, yes, that was a call to worship. Uh, a call to Jesus, a call to receive the Holy Spirit. But in addition to this, we have a call to serve, don't we? Yeah. We have a call to, to serve the people out there in the world, to love those around us, even though sometimes they make it a little bit difficult, don't they? Our self-denial verse this year is, freely you have received, so freely give. We give through our service and through the loving of others. Our next song calls us to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying, to be God's hands and feet out in the world so that they know his love, that they experience him through us and his work through us. We're going to sing together. It's number 927 in the songbook if you're following there but we'll sing together rescue the perishing care for the dying Snap. says to us, down in the human heart, crushed by the temper, feeling lie buried that grace can restore, touched by a loving hand, wakened by kindness, chords that were broken will vibrate once more. Isn't that a beautiful image of God's restoration and transformation coming into someone's life that he calls us to be part of. We'll sing verse 4 together. Rescue the perishing duty demands it strength for thy labor. Savior, I 
into a time of reflection upon our, our self-denial, and um, we'll just have the video come, hopefully. <clears throat> Rebecca and I watched online worship last week of another core, and uh, we were relieved to see that we're not the only ones who have technical difficulties. <laughs> so... Uh, Lovely. If you if you move it on from there, Shirai, you should just have to click down, hopefully. There we go. And then again to the video. And then once more to get it to play. And we don't have any volume, so if you pause it and turn up the audio. Bueno, yo soy eh, José Luis Ortuste, soy de nacionalidad boliviana, eh, de Cochabamba, y estoy acá en Salto junto a mi esposa eh, Keila Rocha y mi hijo de seis años, Mateo Ortuste Rocha. Entramos a la Escuela de Cadetes nosotros en el 2019, ese año de la pandemia, y bueno, de ahí salimos y, y, y bueno, estamos trabajando acá en, en Salto. Lieutenants Jose and Kayla are from Bolivia. They trained as officers in Argentina and Uruguay is their first appointment. Hermana, Juana, bien? Y Salto a mí me parece una ciudad increíble. Es pequeña, eh, pero es muy cálida, eh, la gente es muy amable, eh, se siente mucho en familia. There are significant differences in the countries that make up South America, but almost all celebrate carnival. Uruguay is the most politically stable country in South America, but it's also expensive to live here. That's not a problem for people with decent jobs, but unemployment has been stubbornly high for years. So people who fall on hard times can get caught up in a cycle of poverty that's difficult to break out of. To support people who are struggling, the Salvation Army has been running food distribution programs. Every Friday, Jose heads to the shops to collect ingredients for a soup of love. The food is all donated by local businesses, and in the afternoon, volunteers from the Corps get together to cook it up. Esa comida que preparamos es con mucho amor, y los voluntarios que llegan a prepararlo dan de su tiempo, y, y ese, por ese lado es donde muestran el amor, y por eso se lo llamamos sopa de amor. Pero vamos a orar, sí, para poder servirnos el alimento. Vamos a bendecir las manos que han sido preparadas, sí. Que tenemos. Eh, Esa actividad con la gente que realmente necesita, esa gente realmente que quizás no le alcanza para comprarse. Amén. Bueno, pueden pasar ahí, eh, decir sus porciones. Y como yo no tengo cómo comprar, a mí el alimento a mí me ayuda bastante. No tengo comida, no tengo trabajo, no tengo nada. Entonces, lo, lo que ahora tengo por ahora es esto nomás. Es bravo, hay gente que está pasando peor todavía. Y yo estoy muy agradecida, muy agradecida. La verdad que sí. The team also have a well-established partnership with the local authority and give out food each weekday morning. And for the last few weeks, the Salvation Army have been helping some of Salto's other residents. The river, which separates Uruguay from Argentina, is prone to flooding. But a few weeks back, the water reached new highs. More than 3,000 people have had their homes flooded. The Salvation Army is providing food packages to support families in temporary accommodation. Thank you. Thank you. 
es pura, digamos, que... Jose and Kayla are well known here because of their weekly Bible club. On Saturday morning, it's Bible club. Sábados nosotros nos dedicamos a la juventud prácticamente acá en Salto que también con ellos es un precioso grupo que se hacen muchas actividades la mayoría de los adolescentes que asisten vienen de familias desintegradas bueno tam, prepárense para el saludo sí the work with young people has become more important because since the pandemic the youth suicide rate has increased significantly entonces en este lugar ellos pueden encontrar amistad, amor, comprensión y nosotros tratamos de darle esa atención eh, para ellos con diferentes programas que hacemos. Cuando nosotros estamos firmes en buena tierra, nosotros producimos fruto en nuestro tiempo. Queremos que ellos sepan que su vida vale, que ellos son valiosos, que ellos pueden tener un futuro y que por más situaciones que pasen, ahí no acaba todo, sino que hay una esperanza para ellos. As well as their work in the community, Jose and Kayla also run two Salvation Army Corps in the city. Él es la vida. Él es la vida. Pero dice Jesús, yo he venido para que tengan vida y tengan en abundancia. Eh, la gente que viene a las reuniones de Salto, realmente que son muy, muy amables, eh, muy atentos eh, y muy servicial. Eh, me siento muy contento a poder llevar eh, a la par eh, este, dos nombramientos. A pesar de que es cansador, yo decidí ser un oficial porque realmente comprendí el mensaje eh, de Jesucristo que nos, nos encomienda una misión, la gran comisión que nos dice de predicar el Evangelio. Para mí el éxito es cuando veo a las personas sonreír, a los niños, a las personas adultas, a la gente que viene a recoger su comida y una sonrisa, creo que para mí ya ese es el éxito. Next week is the last of the films in this series. I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Excellent. Aren't they, aren't they inspiring to see what's going on? Re Rebecca said the other day she loves seeing the videos, but she always gets frustrated because she feels here there's so many limitations on what we can do because of bureaucracy uh, and things like that, where in those countries they seem to be able to just get out there and do stuff, don't they? But, um, so next week is going to be the altar service. So um, if you've got a box to put coins in or if you've got an envelope to, to put a, a, a gift, a financial gift in, then uh, that will be your time to give those then. But um, I'm going to uh, invite Rebecca now and she's going to come and bring our Bible reading to us. Oh, so the Bible reading this week, oh, it's so lovely to see you. <laughs> it really is lovely looking out on you from here. The Bible reading this week is from the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament. So it's Leviticus chapter 19, and it's verses, uh, excuse me, bear with me. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 33 and 34. And then in chapter 23, verse 22. Okay, so first of all, Leviticus chapter 19, 33 and 34. Okay. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not ill treat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. 
and Leviticus verse 23 and sorry chapter 23 and verse 22 when you reap the harvest of your land do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest leave them for the poor and for the foreigner residing among you i am the lord your god amen and may god bless that to us today now i think we should have had some prayer points there shirai did i just move it on and then we landed up missing them but uh, we do want to pray for our brothers and sisters in South America. You've been to South America. Have you been to Uruguay? Argentina, which is close, yes. What? Yes. So would, it, would your experience match what you saw on the screen, do you think? Yeah. Hello. There we go. Oh, we missed them again. I'll tell you what, we'll make it easy. Why don't we just, I'll just open it up. And why don't we just pray for our brothers and sisters in Uruguay that God will bless them and continue to provide so that they can help so many of those vulnerable people. or somebody else. David, go on then.
Thank you, David. Thank you. I, th I think that's a particularly apt video today, especially because we're thinking about, uh, we're going to be looking at our spiritual gifts and, and the role that plays. We've been seeing God's people serving, haven't we? Using their gifts to make a difference in other people's lives through that video. We're going to continue in our worship. We're going to give in the offering. Pam's going to play something beautiful for us, I'm sure. And uh, as, as she plays, I'd invite you to come forward with your offerings. That's 418 in the songbook, if any of you got a songbook. I wonder, the chorus is very simple. It says, people need the Lord, people need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. People need the Lord, people need the Lord. When will we realize that people need the Lord? Why don't we just sing that chorus together, okay? very heavy today. Father God, we just want to thank you for these offerings and the gifts that you have given. We pray that you will use them for the extension of your kingdom in this place and ask that you will bless the, the many brothers and sisters around the world, Father God, um, but also bless the people here in Catford, Father God, through the giving of this money. In Jesus' name, amen. So you can move it off that, Shirai, to the, the thought or the sermon slide. So this morning we're, we're just going to take a few minutes, and it's just a few minutes today, just to have a little bit of time of reflection upon um, the readings that we shared. That picture there, if you're looking at that picture, that's supposed to represent the meeting tent uh, that Moses would have gone to and Moses would have gone in there and that's where God would have spoken to him and uh, and that's where our words from Leviticus according to from tradition would have come 
So we find ourselves in Leviticus, and I have to say, if you're looking for excitement and inspirational stories and all action uh, going on in the Bible, don't look at Leviticus, okay? Leviticus is not full of stories about people. It's not full of action or anything like that. But if you're the type of person who wants to understand why ancient Israel lived the way they did, why they did what they did on a daily basis or things like that, how they reacted to situations, then Leviticus is your book. Because Leviticus is a book of, of law. It's a book of guidance and instruction to the Israelite people. And it covers everything from how to worship to sex and everything in between. It talks about it all. And um, you might be wondering why we're looking at the book of Leviticus when we're talking about the desert. Well, the reason we're talking about it is because the book of Leviticus is God starting to speak to Moses and the Israelites about, he's giving them instruction in the desert for what life will look like when they're not in the desert. When I think of Leviticus, I often think of somebody who's kind of daydreaming. Do you ever daydream? Do you ever have one of those what if or when daydreams? When I've got my new house. When, what life will be like when I have my new job or when I move to that new place. You start to daydream and you start to think what life will be like. And when I read Leviticus, I almost imagine God and Moses sitting down and imagining what life should be like when they're in the promised land. When they're in that special place. Because at the moment, we're told that they're in the desert. Okay, so some of it is helpful. Some of it, well, that covers laws around purity and around worship because they're doing those things now. But a lot of it is for when they're in the promised land, what life will look like then. And um, it often makes me wonder why God is giving them these instructions now. Why does God tell them now the rules for a place that they haven't even gotten to? And we know because of their disobedience they're not going to get to for 40 years. Why is God telling them now? I think it's because God knows the human heart better than we do. Uh, Queen Mary University carried out, I I was reading this week, a social experiment. And in this social experiment, they gave some people high status and other people low status. And their status was determined by how much money um, was given to them by the researcher. So the people that had more money had high status. The people that were given less money by the researcher had low status. And what they were asked to do was each individual person was asked to consider how much they would put into a communal pot. And that communal pot would benefit everybody in the group. And what they found through this social experiment was that those who had higher status, those that had more money, were less willing to give up what they'd gained than the people that had the lower status, that had less money. The people with less were willing to give more of what they had for the benefit of everybody than the people in the higher status. God starts to speak to Israel about what life is supposed to be like because at the moment they're in that humble position. They're a group of homeless wanderers going around. So rules about fairness to foreigners and to the poor make sense to them because they're foreigners 
and they're the poor in the land of other people. So when they hear things like, you should treat the foreigners like you treat yourselves, that makes a lot of sense to them because they're foreigners trying to scrape a living in, in a society that would put people who are a part of the other nation above them. God and Moses are trying to dream of a society that is better than the societies around them. One that's perhaps not built or looking at building wealth and power and success, but one that's built on fairness and equality and um, justice for all people if you're a foreigner or if you're a naturally born citizen. And it's easier to accept those rules when we find ourselves in a lower place, isn't it? It's easier to see the value. So God wants to give them these rules now before they get in the land and start like the rich people in the experiment. Um, starting to, to discriminate and trying to protect their own. Rebecca and I had a very interesting experience. Um, we, we were running a youth group in Bristol and we were talking to some of these young kids one day and there were these group of young kids and they were all going and complaining about all the foreign students, all the people who'd moved over from other countries that were taking their school places. They couldn't get a school place because somebody had moved over. Now we looked at this group of people and all these people were people whose families originally came from another country. They, they grew up in Britain, you know, they were born here. I'm not saying that they weren't British, but originally all their families came from somewhere else. And within one generation, we start hearing all these people coming over from other countries stealing our school places. Isn't that funny? God, well, it's not funny, but isn't it sad, really? But God knows the human heart, doesn't he? Sometimes he instructs us in things now that seem to have little to do with our life because he knows that something is coming up later. This year, our Bible verse for self-denial, I've already referred to it, is freely give as freely you have received. God calls us to be a generous people. Not just with our money, but with ourselves. And in just a few moments, we're going to do our spiritual gift survey to help either identify our spiritual gifts or to confirm. Maybe you already have an idea of what your spiritual gift is, and this will just help to, f to fulfill or, or confirm that for you. But the gifts that we have have been received. They're not from us. That's why they're called gifts. And therefore, as we're doing this, we need to also be considering how we're going to use them for the benefit of others. How can we use our gifts to serve those around us? How can we use our gifts to serve in our church community, in the communities we live in, in our families? So as we do our, our tests, let us do so prayerfully and with an expectation that God wants to use our gifts to bless others. So you'd be very surprised that that's all I have to say today. <laughs> I normally go on much longer. But we're, we're just going to take some moments for reflection uh, because I really do want us to pray before we do the, the spiritual gifts. So we're, we're going to share in a song together. Uh, that's going to come up in, on the screen. It's a video. And then after, I, I wonder if I just ask Rebecca to just come and to pray uh, over us before we take time. Now, some, some people have done the surveys ahead of time because they've, they've done it on the computer. But we have the surveys here. But those who've done it before, 
we've asked if they would hang about to help those who are going to be filling it out on paper just to, to help with that process. Okay? So let's sing together, Waymaker, Miracle Worker. of the deep and the chaos your Holy Spirit hovered over the waters and your Holy Spirit has never stopped working you never stop working you are hovering over Catford 
You are hovering over this world. You have not given up on it. And out of the chaos and out of the darkness of the deep, our God is working, is moving, is creating. We thank you that you call all of us. You call the boy with the loaves and the fishes. You call Simeon and Anna in their old age to prophesy. You called rough fishermen with hardly any education. You called women of the street and the outcasts and the lepers and the sick and the poor and the rich and the learned. And you pulled them together as a people and as a family. Your Holy Spirit is at work here today and we are excited to discover what you are going to do with all of us, what you have given each of us and how we can use it to build the kingdom of God so that Catford is more like heaven and less like hell. Hallelujah. And Lord, as we come before you in prayer, we pray that our ears will be open to the movement of the Spirit and you will show us what we have to give and what our role is and how we can be part of your glorious work here on earth in this time, at this hour, in this place. Amen.